Hey, what's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter, and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name, aka Kush, back at it again with another New York Giants video. This time, another New York Giants collab. On with me today is one of the OGs, as his the first two letters of his name suggest. OGR, one giant rebuttal from OGR Sports. Been waiting to have him on the channel for a while. One of the more like. I don't want to say original in the sense that he produces original content, but original in this, well, he does do that, but original in the sense that he's one of the first Giants YouTubers to ever be on YouTube that I know of. And this guy has been doing it for a while now, both as a fan and as a creator. And of course, he has some of the best opinions out there on the New York Giants. Welcome on, OGR. How you doing? Wow, my man, what an intro. I mean, you described my channel to a T. <laughs> I mean, can we end this podcast right now? Because mic drop. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate you, and I love your channel as well. I love to hear your opinions. I love to hear all Giants fans' opinions, to be quite frankly. Troll or not, I really do enjoy it. And sorry, I do want to apologize to all the people out there. You might hear some background noise. You probably heard my son crying already. It's all right. Actually, whatever mic you're using, it's pretty good right now. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, man. So, OGR, as we were saying before we actually started the pod, man, we were both we both kind of agreed thank god the draft is tomorrow because we're kind of tired oh my it is i am so tired of hearing all this speculation let's get it done better yet let's just start it tonight right oh my god why couldn't they move it up like we both know like hey man it's already been a weird off season teams aren't you know they're not having the chances to do what they normally do or what they want to do why not just move it up honestly yeah, it's crazy, my man. So what do you want to start with? I imagine you want to start with the Alliance rumor. That's the first speculation, and that came probably, what, a couple hours ago with that? Yeah, literally, like, a couple hours ago. In fact, I just saw it, you know, on my YouTube notifications. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed to OGR, his uh, links will be down below. Turn on notifications for his channel and mine. I saw it on my notifications for Bad Dog and um, Tana's videos on it. I haven't actually gotten to check out the rumor but of course, I mean, what is there to know other than there's it's rumors out there that the Dolphins want to trade up to number three to get an offensive tackle or something like that, right? Pretty much. They want to trade up to number three with the Lions to get the offensive tackle to jump the Giants so they get the tackle of their choice. Uh, supposedly, they're not interested in either one of these quarterbacks in this year's draft. Uh, I could see a tackle making sense for Miami. Obviously, losing Laramie Tunsil last year or trading away Laramie Tunsil, it makes a ton of sense. Um, I... I'm a little shocked by it because I believe all the tackles are top 15 worthy. Now, are they top five worthy? That's for the team to determine, but you know, it's questionable a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised too. Cause I agree with you. They're top 15 worthy tackles. There's, there's some arguments to be made for at most one. I think that's top five worthy, maybe two, but, um, if the, if the Dolphins were trying to get one of these, you know, for the best tackles in the draft, I would think they'd trade up from 18 to something, not necessarily five to three. Maybe they just really covet their pick it, and I mean, uh, they, maybe they're no, trying to rip on, somebody on. off. You know? It could be that you think they might be trying to make a move at Isaiah Simmons. What's the, uh, the Dolphins linebacking core like? Honestly, I it can't be that good. I mean, they traded away almost all their pieces. Drake or Patrick's gone. Um, uh, as far as uh, I know, the uh, oh no, Mika one... Fitzpatrick. I said Drake Patrick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mika no, Fitzpatrick's that... gone. Um, and as far I'm really not familiar with Miami's defense, so I can't exactly. imagine the linebacking core is not very good. I, I do know they had an okay offseason. The only signing that comes to mind defensive wise, I think they got Kyle Van Noy, right? So even then, that's just one linebacker, and we don't even know how long he's going to be there. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I'm just throwing something out, but it could be a smokescreen to try and get uh, Simmons. It could be a smokescreen just for anything. It could be a smokescreen for a quarterback. It, exactly. I mean, maybe they really are in love with Herbert and they're doing their best to, to uh, hide it. Oh, you think they're in love with Herbert? I mean, they, you know, anytime I hear a team like, ah, oh, you know, we're not crazy on this guy, we're not crazy on this guy, and then they end up taking him. Uh, so, all right. <laughs> so I could easily see them going up number three with the Lions, who are probably in a better position to trade than the Giants. And they skip the Giants and they go get their guy and they make sure that the Chargers would have to do something desperate 
to um, get it. And you're the, you'd only time they'd pull the trigger on this trade was when the Lions are on the co- clock. So the Chargers, if they really feel that Miami's going to do this, would have to move up. If they're definitely taking quarterback at six, they can't stand Pat. They would have to move up to number, try and move up to number two or even number one uh, to get ahead well, of this. So why do you say, okay, let's say uh, Miami moves up and they take a tackle. Let's just go with the rumors, right? How does that affect the rest of the draft? What does... Uh, do the Giants, well, we don't even know what the Giants are going to do. Like, let's be honest. I have no idea what they're going to do. If I had to pick something, the only reason I'm going Simmons is because he's been linked to us more than any other player. And I'm just going off of past years where last year we were linked to Jones and the year before that, after the combine, we were linked to Barkley. I mean, we could really go anywhere with the Giants. But then how does it go? Who do the Lions take at five? And then who do the, what do the Chargers do at six? So it all depends on the Redskins. The Redskins are the catalyst for the rest of the draft because... If the Redskins go to it, let's say yeah. the rumors are true and they do go to it and they have, they're not taking Chase Young. Cause have you heard anything official on the Redskins taking Chase Young? I mean, I, I know I, a lot of Redskins fans just feel that's a foregone conclusion, but I not that I can it. blame them, but yeah, I, I hear where you're coming from. I haven't heard anything official. All right. I haven't heard anything official either. So the, to me, the Redskins are the catalyst for the draft. If they skip Chase Young, it throws the draft into chaos because at this point, do teams try and leap the Giants to get Chase Young because they know it's not going past the Giants? Do you try and go up and, you know... Here's the thing, know, right? Why why does everybody think if he's past the uh, the Redskins, why do people think that he's getting past the Lions? Because if he's such a great talent... I think a, a lot of people think talent, that... I think a lot of people think that there's so many quarterback needy teams, even though it wouldn't be a shock for me for the Lions to take a quarterback. Like, the Lions... Do the Lions need are that desperate for a pre- pass rusher? You know, I could see him getting past the Lions. I'm not saying he would, and it wouldn't be shock me if they took him. It's just they have more pressing needs than just a pass rusher. Like you I, could, don't, you could argue the same for the Giants, though, right? Like obviously, in my opinion, I do think I, I can't. Past personally, the Lions. I'm I just can't. trying to like get the debate on, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, personally, I can't, but yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Because it's like the Giants, right? If we're gonna be honest, well. Actually, OGR, based off of the panel that we did last Friday, which was great, you did say that tackle is our greatest need, right? To me, tackle is our biggest need. Yeah, um, so I, I have the same feeling. Tackle is our biggest need, but if Chase Young drops to us, I'm still taking Young. Oh, yeah, I'm taking Young. Young's Young's the best talent. He's the number one prospect as far as talent-wise in this year's draft. I mean, obviously, position uh, quarterback outweighs it, but position of value. But no, I definitely think Young is the best player in this year's draft. No doubt about it. Okay. So let's say, let me set up the scenario for you. Let's say that the Redskins do go Young, right? And then with this Miami rumor, they trade up to three. Who do they take? And then just break down the draft down to the Chargers because that would be the next quarterback I'll team. do. I'll do real two quick scenarios. Mm-hmm. I think my I'm going to go Miami trades up to three and they'll take Herbert. At that point... As a Giants fan, I want us to trade out. But assuming the Giants stay, the Giant, the Giants pick, I believe, at that point, I'm going to go with the rumors right now and say it's worse, even though I'm more of a Judge of Wills guy. Then from there, the Lions, I think, are okay taking Okuda at five. I think that makes total sense at that point. And then the San Diego Chargers either take Tua or they address anything else they feel they need, but they definitely need a quarterback, in my opinion. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, so do you I'm, think do you think Tua's uh, injury history before you get to your second scenario? You think that's going to make him drop it all or no? The physical that he failed. It's how confident you are that he can come back from the injury. It all depends on the organization and how they look at it. I think he can, but a lot of people compare it to the Bo Jackson injury, and Bo Jackson never came back from that. Okay, what's um? I would compare it to. I guess the most recent one that comes to mind, even though it happened during his career, would be RG3, right? But this is, you know, before Tua actually starts his career. And while well, same thing there, people thought, you know, RG3 would come back, be the same. He was never the same. And now he's a backup for the Ravens. So. I don't think that RG3 wasn't the same. I think RG3 was afraid at that point and changed his style, more or less. At least the stories oh, really? I hear. I still think he's the same. He could be the same type of player. I think those hits took a toll mentally. And he doesn't want to do it anymore. Like, he doesn't want to be that running court. He wanted to change his style. And that's Man. why he struggled, because he's not a pure pocket passer and can't be. And that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to change his style. 
Man, Ojo, you're tempting me to get onto a whole tangent here because that alone could be a great topic of its own. <laughs> but do you really think? Okay, let's. Uh, just, guys, I'm sorry, but this is so interesting that I can't avoid it. You really think that RG3 it's a mental thing? So you're saying what? What, what year did he come back from the injury? Was it 13 or 14? <sighs> Honestly, I can't remember. Let, so. Okay, let's say it was 13. You think that? Oh man, if he was in the right mental space, he's coming back and performing the way he did his rookie year. I don't know if he's coming back, but he's he's still taking chances. He's still running the football. Put it that way. I, I he can be he, that dual he threat. Did, uh, he did change his uh, play style for sure. Anybody with two eyes could see that. But I thought it was because he was forced to. I didn't. That's interesting. I've, I've heard opposite. I've heard the opposite. I've heard that Shanahan wanted to keep the same play style. And he said no. Him and his family said no. We are. I want to be more of a passer. I will say this, I know that the reason he even got injured in the first place was because the Redskins coaching staff, you know, didn't want to change it before he got injured. He knew that it was, um, it wasn't exactly great for his health. I know that. And then ultimately the Redskins, as they do Redskins things, basically ended his career. Yes. So I'll switch it up back because I don't, I know we get a whole tangent. So I'll yeah. end that there. Uh, I mean, hey, if we want to get back on, we'll tell us RG3, I'll talk to you all day. Sure. All that being said, my second scenario would be, okay, Miami is telling the truth. They do and take the tackle. They're in love with Wurfs. They're afraid the Giants are going to take Wurfs. They're in love with Wurfs. They take Wurfs at three. The Giants, at that point, I would love to still them see them trade back. They don't trade back. I believe they, they're they okay with any of the three tackles in this draft. I think the Giants go Dredrick Wills at that point because of the tie to Alabama. And then after that, again, I will have the— I would have the Detroit Lions at that point at five taking Okuda, and then um, I would take the have the Chargers picking Herbert at six. So you still have three quarterbacks going within the top six? Yes, I still have three quarterbacks. I could see a scenario where where Miami is not in love with two and they just stick with the whatchamacallit, and then it would only be the two. It would only be Burrow and Herbert. All right. But I, because- could, I, could, I could still see a team saying, you know what? We're still in on Tua. All right. So hey, for those of you that don't know, I'm guessing that didn't look at the title or anything. I'm still working on the title, obviously, but I was going to title it like final slash bold predictions for the draft. And the reason for that is because my one like bold prediction, which could obviously be wrong, is that I think Justin Herbert is going to slip. If there's anybody that's going to fall, I think it's going to be him. And I think that he falls to somewhere in the teens or the 20s because I um, it's weird, right? The Justin Herbert rumors came out what, yesterday or the day before. Uh, you know, being linked to the Giants and whatnot, that smokescreen. The day that came out, hours before that, I was looking at Justin Herbert tape. Just by pure coincidence, before the rumor came out, I was looking at Herbert tape. And I came across uh, Brett Coleman's breakdown video, who was a great, you know, great YouTuber to go for if you want to see him break down both NFL level players and college level players. And I saw him break down Justin Herbert, and he was basically saying, that Herbert is a very inconsistent quarterback. And I had to see it for myself. So I went and I looked at tape on my own and he was telling the truth. There's games where Justin Herbert proves himself to be a top three quarterback, where he moves in the pocket like a, you know, a well and tried veteran and makes throws that almost nobody else in the draft class could. But there's also many other games where his foot stance is terrible on every single pass and it gets worse and worse as he does his reads and he makes just really stupid throws that should have been corrected, say his sophomore year of the college season. And that's the thing, Justin Herbert has stayed the same quarterback from his freshman year to now. He hasn't improved at all. And he's making the same mistake. So he's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde character, kind of like his, uh, the last quarterback out of Oregon, Marcus Mariota. One game he's really good, one game he's not. And I think because of that, he may slip. He may slip. Um, I, I view Herbert as the second best quarterback in this class. Uh, and a lot of people may even have him at number one, and you might think that's crazy, but we don't know if Joe Burrow is not a system quarterback. He could be a system quarterback. Like that's the thing about uh, that's the biggest knock on Joe Burrow. Like, how did you make this big of a jump? But for me, I am I, I really like Herbert. Herbert's one of my favorite quarterbacks in this class. And had he come out last year, he would have been the Giants' pick. Oh, for and sure. He, Dave Gettleman went to go see him three times last year. I think a lot of people forget that. He went to go see him three times. I believe twice in Oregon. He's still fighting off cancer at this point. And once, I think, uh, somewhere in the middle of the country. I could be totally wrong on exactly when he went, but I know he went three times. I'm not going to say the Giants are going to take Herbert at four. 
okay, I, it most likely is a herb, uh, is a smoke screen. But I was so adamant that the Giants are, weren't going to take Daniel Jones last year. I'm not making that same mistake. Same mistake. Never say never. I can I, see a world where the Giants take Herbert and trade away Daniel Jones. I can see a world. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not. But I could see a world in where that happens and that this coaching staff is not enamored with Daniel Jones. And this was my potential fear. I said it when we were letting go of Pat Shermer. This is a dumb decision. You should keep Pat Shermer for at least another year to work with this quarterback. I never wanted Pat Shermer to go because I believe continuity between quarterback and head coach means so much. And it's so undervalued. I, I don't even know how I would react. If we take Herbert and trade away Jones, like you said, I don't see it happening, but just because of the current NFL world and who we have in our front office, it's like, it's not out of their own possibility. I don't know. How would you react if that happens? I don't even know what I'd do. I, I, I'm not going to have the same reaction to Daniel Jones. I, I'm actually going to be a little bit more level-headed about it, but I can't, wa- I can't wait to watch other Giants fans react at that point. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to have a black. I am going to be laughing. I'm going to have more fun watching other Giants fans. Than here's, myself. here's the thing, though, right? Like last year when everybody freaked out about Jones, um, I, I was kind of level head about it. I said, listen, I don't like him, but I have to see him play and all that. This year, I, I can kind of give fans a pass if they just blow up because it does kind of set you back another year. And then there's the whole question. You know, you're, you're basically taking a quarterback to replace a quarterback you just took. So I, I can see... I can definitely see why fans will, will blow up about that. God. Uh, the, on the Pat Shermer thing, that was a very interesting point. The reason I wanted Shermer gone was because he gave up, like, I want to say 10 games into the season. And I, I just didn't want that. I don't know if uh, you saw that also, but Shermer to me looked like he gave up on just coaching in general, like 10, 12 games into the season. I can see where you get that. I, I'm not, I'm not going to see the same thing, and I'm not going to sit there and tell Giants fans that Shermer was great. But mm-hmm. this team, leading into another point, needs to get continuity. This team needs to stick with something. You can't keep hiring and firing and expect to go out there and get great candidates, either at coaching or GM. If you keep doing this, you're only leading to disaster. How many times in your lifetime have you watched a team hire and fire, hire and fire? I mean, you watch the revolving door that's in Cleveland, the revolving door that has been the Jets, and where are they? The same place they've always been basement or close to it exactly i agree with you and you another great point because right now gettleman might be out the door and i don't want him out the door i'm not a gettleman truther even though it might seem like that on you know if anybody goes on my channel but the reason i make a lot of videos trying to bolster up dave gettleman is because i want him to stay for that continuity reason i'm not gonna go out here and say he's a great gm and that he's perfect dude has made boneheaded decisions plenty of them not just the leonard williams trade in my opinion his first season here that first offseason where he let go of um or what was his name romeo okwara who could have been a potential good pass rusher for us among other players you know there were boneheaded decisions made there but i agree with you for continuity's sake you got to keep people on and in this case it will be gettleman you know for the coming year i'm gonna speak to this real quick though as far as the first year with Dave Gettleman, everybody says he was trying to win and build at the same time. I do not believe that for one second. Oh, he was try- I think he was he trying, was to, trying to win. You, he I was know, trying he to was, win? He was trying to win. All his moves, taking Barkley at two, all his moves pointed to a, a guy with limited cap space trying to win. I felt that ownership felt that that year, that 2017 was a fluke year, that a team that fell apart, and if they changed the culture and they brought in somebody new with a level head, that they were gonna that they were gonna get back to their winning ways. I truly believe all this can be squarely blamed on ownership's shoulders. I preach that on my channel all the time. Ownership is the biggest culprit for where we are at, and not enough people put the blame there. Everybody wants to use Dave Gettleman as a punching bag. I seem like a Dave Gettleman defender, and I'm not gonna excuse moves like Jonathan Stewart or Alec Ogletree or Leonard Williams. You can criticize those till the day you die. But at the end of the day, Dave Gettleman has done more good than bad. I and completely agree with you. I'll make this last point, and then I'll let you get on to the next thing. If Dave Gettleman gets fired tomorrow, and we you know, we go to have success two, three years down the road, who are you going to give the most credit to? 
Oh, yeah. Or is this a rhetorical question? Yeah, this is a rhetorical actual... question. Who you... Okay. <laughs> this is a rhetorical question. Who are you going to give the most credit to? And our answer is going to be Dave Gettleman. You'd be stupid not to. At exactly. He built the foundations. Exactly. I... And, that, and that's what I've been preaching for months and months and months. As much as much hate as we get, because a lot of people have that same school. I call it the Mike Too Nice school of thought. If you know what I'm talking about, he can't stand Dave Gettleman. Mike, listen, Mike Too Nice. He's a great. He's a great Giants fan and creator in his own sense. But yeah, he's definitely uh, just does not give Gettleman a chance, yo. But I I agree with you, and um, I for those of you once again, if you haven't checked out OGR's channel, links in the description. Unless he made a new video since the last bit I saw on his channel was the one talking about Dave Gellman and how ownership is the culprit. And I completely agree with you. I've I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now as well. Not as long, uh, not a couple months, but I've only like sort of come to con- to the conclusion a couple of weeks ago. And I believe I even put this in a comment. I'm kind of shocked that it took so long for you know me as a fan to come to a conclusion. But a lot of fans don't realize that they need to kind of have that wake up call. We're in the situation that we're in, and we've been put essentially down to the bottom of the barrel because of decisions made by ownership. And it's not just back to 2017. You can go all the way back to 2015, maybe even all the way back to 2012, 2011, after the last Super Bowl win. Uh, Since there on out, ownership has made terrible decisions. And right now, just according to rumors and reports, because we can't go off of anything else, it seems as though they want Gelman gone, which would be a stupid, another stupid decision that sets us back even more. So the I only with- way I would justify that is if they replace him with Kevin Abrams, because at this point you're not making a giant change. And I told Giant, I've told Giants, he's fans, the, uh, I've made, VP, I've made, right? I've, he's the assistant GM right now. Okay. And he was the assistant GM while Jerry Reese was here. And uh, Kevin Abrams, the only person that's been in the building, has been through all these changes, would be okay with Daniel Jones being the quarterback, would be okay with, um, Joe Judge being the head coach, all the decisions that GMs pride themselves on, you know, a new G. You're not getting any old new GM. You're you're gonna get Kevin Kevin Abrams because he's the only somebody logical that's been here. Exactly, you're gonna get somebody who's been here, and it, it's it's this. It just irritates me to no end. To be honest with you, I could get so much more fired up than this. I, <laughs> oh god, but I yeah, I actually also, did yeah. make. To correct the point you made, I actually did make a video today. I just made a quick cell okay. phone video because I didn't have a chance. I, you know, I was at the job site, but uh, I didn't have a chance well, go, to go ahead and promote that vid real quick. Well, no, the promote the vid, but I'm promoting you in the vid because I told <laughs> guys, I told everybody, I, I'm gonna be working with the hub today. I'm gonna be working with my man TSR tomorrow, and I'm gonna be working with Bobby Butcher's Box and Bakery Talk Saturday. So, you know, I each of your Links are in the description box below. So if you guys want to go check out that video, it was just a basic final thoughts right before the draft and what I would like to see the Giants do. You guys heard the man. You better go down, go downstairs, take a little step. It's just a little scroll and click on it. Sub up. But to get back to the draft, um, we can both really, I can see that we can both really go off on a tangent about RG3, about ownership, about Dave Gettleman. But I'm glad to see that we, we agree. He's done more good than bad. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, let, let's correct. let's get back to the draft and the main reason of this whole thing. You got any bold predictions you want to put out into the world, OGR? Something wild, anything bold, not just for the Giants, NFL wide. NFL wide, I think you see trade ups at the back of the draft. You're talking back about from, the like, first round. from the second back into the first? I see. I think you're going to see a run like you did last year where you're going to have a bu- bunch of teams. I'd say I'm going to make a bold prediction. Seven teams trade up from the second round back into the first round. Seven? That's an oddly specific number. <laughs> I don't know why I chose seven. I was thinking six, and I just jumped to seven. I wanted to make some odd predictions, so there you go. Seven teams will trade up from the second round back into the first round. Are, are we talking about from uh, pick 20 onwards or a little later? Either pick – yeah, I'd say 20 onwards or even a little later. Like it, Both are fine with me. I, you're going to see teams either move up or just pick – move up from the second round, like 40th pick on trying to move back into the first round. Well, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the Seahawks are almost given every year to trade down. So there's one team right there that's going to trade with the Seahawks. Patriots. Pay all Patriots. Also, although last year they did keep their pick, you think they're going to keep their pick or do you think you, uh, well, I'm guessing you think they're going to trade down. My bold prediction, my real bold prediction that I wanted to do, because I don't know how big of a believer the Patriots are in Jared Stinham. Go ahead and say it, Trading into the top half of the first round and getting their guy. Jordan Love? I was going to go Herbert. 
You you going up that far? You're thinking I'm going trade basically if, up into the top ten. Right, put it this way: if Herbert makes it past six, don't be surprised if the Patriots fly up the board and get him. I will say, well, you guys heard my bold prediction. I think he's gonna drop. Here's the thing, right? I I have a feeling, and once again, disclaimer: it's not like we're experts, guys. We're just fans, right? So we can definitely be wrong. Oh, we're but speculating. Really, we are throwing I, pure speculation. Exactly. I really think that Herbert's gonna fall into the teens and. I guess to coincide with your prediction, I wouldn't be shocked that they trade up into the teens. It's not that big of a jump for them. Let's say he falls to, uh, I don't know, 14 where the Bucks are or something, which is kind of a nice coincidence. But I can see that happening if he does fall, and I do think he's going to fall. But I like other than that, I, I just thought they were going to take a quarterback anyway. I just thought it would be Jordan Love. It could be Jordan Love, but I wouldn't be surprised if the team picks, him way, picks way before the Patriots Jordan Love. At, at, at one, at one point, I've up. seen Jordan Love going in the top ten. All right, now, not that. that's changed, but I've seen I've seen plenty of mocks having Jordan Love going in the top ten. At one point, I've seen mocks for quarterbacks in the top ten. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but I would not be surprised if a team pulls a Daniel Jones. No pun intended. I. Uh, <laughs> I I I I agree with you. I don't see four quarterbacks happening because uh, last year, once again, people kind of forget. But last year, everybody had like four quarterbacks going in the top ten. Um, it was uh, Dwayne Haskins, Kyler Murray, Drew Locke, and somebody else. I forgot. If not top ten, top fifteen. And then we got only three quarterbacks in the first round. I think uh, Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins, Daniel Jones, who was never even mocked in the first round except by one NFL uh, head. But yeah, I don't see. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't see four quarterbacks going in the first. There might be. Yo, we could go into a situation where it's just one quarterback taken in the first round. I can see that happening because I can see Tua dropping because of the physical and Herbert dropping because of the reasons I've given before. You know, once again, just throwing speculation out there, but I could see that happening. Uh, I think there's just too many QB needy teams that these that we see. In other, I see. I say we definitely see four quarterbacks taken in the first round. Uh, Jordan's not making it to the second. Here's the thing, though, right? Why aren't these QB needy teams signing uh, proven guys like Cam or maybe a little unproven but guys with potential like uh, James Winston? What do you think is happening with them, too? Honestly, I think people are afraid of Cam's attitude. Oh, that's is, is something he, I haven't heard. I'll be honest with you. Because Cam, Cam just doesn't – you know, he seemed aloof He at, at the end of his term in Carolina. He didn't seem like he was ready to go. You know, he just seemed – like he was going to, that he knew that the end in Carolina was over. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just speculation on my part. That's what I read into it. And I think teams are worried about his commitment to their team or his, and obviously health concerns, but more or less his commitment to their team. And is he that franchise guy or is he done? Because I could see easily Cam Newton saying tomorrow, I'm done with the NFL. He's made his millions. He's still a marketable name. He could still be in commercials. I wouldn't be surprised. How much does Cam I agree want to with play? you? Because look at Andrew Luck, somebody who retired just last year, comeback player of the year, was looking to probably be in the MVP talk just this past season, and he retired because you know he's made his millions also, but also you know lives over the career. You know. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you for sure. It's just that I I, I see where you're coming from with him looking aloof towards the end of Carolina, to be honest with you, ever since they took McCaffrey and McCaffrey sort of became the face of that franchise, and I'm, I'm not saying Cam is any sort of deep or anything where he needs to be the center of attention, but it was essentially since 2017 where his attitude sh- sort of shifted, in my opinion. And then when he when he had to change his throwing motion was where I think he lost a little love for the game because, you know, your body is so broken and battered at that point that you have to change how you play the game, I feel like that's really where his morale took a hit. Yeah, I agree with that. And then as far as your Jameis Winston thing, I think Jameis Winston, you're going to see Jameis Winston will be signed after the draft for teams that have like two potential starters similar to what happened with uh, Marty, Mariota and Tannehill last year with the Titans. I think that's the scenario where I could see um, Jameis Winston landing. Now, I can't give you a team right off the rip, but if there's a team that's not happy with the quarterback they could draft or decides not to draft a quarterback, that's where you'll see Jameis Winston. I can't tell you a team he'll end up on either. I could just tell you what I wish would happen. 
I wish Jameis goes to the Patriots just because we Belichick could fix any player and uh, I have faith that he could fix Jameis and that would be a nice such a nice storyline, you know, Brady to the Bucks and Jameis to the Pats. I don't think Jameis is fixable. You don't where think I, he's fixable? The reason I, I say this, right, is because he's essentially been playing half blind for the entirety of his career and he just got uh, the laser eye surgery to fix it. So while, you know, we all know Jameis is, uh, you know, you can bet a, for a pick from him every single game, I definitely do think that the eyesight did affect him during his career. I just don't know how much, but yeah, the guy I, was essentially I, playing half blind. Yeah, I know. And he might have been playing half blind, but if you are playing half blind, um, you know, if you're an NFL starting quarterback, now obviously he, like I said, and this is the nervous thing that I have with Daniel Jones, he, nobody, t- Tampa never did him any favors. You can't keep changing coach, quit changing coordinators. What was it? Three co- coaches and three coordinators in those first three years or something? I think, it, I, like, think it, I think it went on to like four and four years. I could be wrong, but yeah, essentially the entire start of his career, he didn't have stability. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry about that scream. It definitely, you definitely heard that one. Yeah, we did, but it's like it didn't come through that big, so it's not even that much of a problem. So yeah, Jameis, it, 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 he's, he's just really puzzling to me. Um, but if you can't make it with Bruce Arians, half blind or not, I don't think you can make it in the league as far as being a starter. Jameis can be an excellent backup. I was never in love with Jameis at all i always thought more mariota coming out in their rookie year was the better quarterback do you think he at this point in his career i can see him as a um um an average starter i, I wouldn't say backup just yet because we have some starters in the leagues that probably shouldn't be starters but i'd say he could his top ceiling would be you know like an average starter or something depending where he ends up i concur with that decision or with that thought all right so Getting back to the draft real quick, another one of my bold predictions, kind of the opposite of your trade one in a sense, but I think that for like the first 10 picks of the draft tomorrow, I think it's going to be very conservative. I think, you know, teams are just going to stay where they are and pick, you know, who they want just because I feel like the the, the first 10 picks they are going to try to use it to sort of feel out the process, the new process of the virtual draft. And also because there was not um there was a great tweet the other day by an NFL reporter whose name is slipping my mind that was saying usually when, you know, teams go out and they do scouting uh of these players at their pro days at the combine and whatnot there's a lot of group thinking and you know a lot of teams come together with a consensus good player at a position but that hasn't happened this year because scouts aren't together scouts aren't talking to each other in person and whatnot they're all doing it through the camera so because of that i also think people's big boards you know each team's big board is completely different so i feel like for them their player is going to be where they want them to be at their pick so i think the first 10 picks are just going to go as is very conservative no trades I actually really don't have much to add on that. I believe that totally. I I concur with that. Um, I could see teams going with familiarity if they're like the Giants and they have anybody that hired from college that has familiarity with the player or a coach that has familiarity with the college that the player is coming from. I could definitely see that being a very logical choice and teams don't move. Or maybe we're wrong and, you know, you get a ton of movement. That's true. Once again, we could be wrong. And it's great you brought up the familiarity point. I'm going to let you get into this. Uh, How much of an advantage do you think the Giants have because they have a bunch of college coaches on their staff? I think they do have a slight advantage compared to other teams. Uh, I don't know if it's make or break or it's really going to, you know, swing the draft in their favor. But I could definitely see, you know, you know, let's say the Giants are really into you, Torgras Matos. They have Mm -hmm. Coach Chaos, Spence, you know. And Spence, I think has, you said, was your favorite coach on this, the roster oh, right now, right? absolutely. Well, it's because I'm a Penn State fan, so I, a little bit <laughs> yeah. of bias here. But obviously, he has familiarity with Utor Gross Matos. He's probably was in there trying to recruit him to Penn State at the time as well. So he's very familiar with Utor Gross Matos. Same with the uh, prospects from Tennessee. So, you know, it could be – it's going to be very interesting. And, yes, I do think the Giants have somewhat of an advantage. I mean, obviously, Joe Judge's connection with Nick Saban – that's why I fully believe that Jedrick Will would have been the pick. Will be the pick. I, I you know? agree. And I think I think the worst things is the worst thing could be a total smoke screen, and that they their guy is Wills. If the worst thing is a smoke screen, that's like the longest playing smoke screen I've seen in a long time. Because worst has been rumored to us since essentially before the combine. People forget that before he had that great combine, he was rumored to us. So that would be like the most elite smoke screen in the history of smoke screens if that's the case. 
See, a lot of people knock Dave Gettleman, not to go back on this. But oh, no, no. I'm glad you bring this up I because I can tell where you're going because that was going to kind of be my next question. So I'm glad yeah. you brought it up. Continue. So, yeah, obviously, I mean, I learned it from your channel. Nah, but yeah, 2014, he already did a virtual draft. This is nothing new to him. So, and he did an excellent job. Billy Bean obviously gave him a ton of credit in that draft, being the assistant GM when they were in Carolina. I totally agree. I, I believe Dave Gettleman can play it and a lot of people look at Dave Gettleman as his bumbling buffoon and there's no way you make it to being this good of a scout and this good of a you know a good GM you know average GM there's no way you're even an average GM in the league if you don't have the smarts Dave Gettleman's a lot smarter and a lot more nimble than people give him credit for, credit credit for mentally exactly man great minds think alike because I was going to bring that out Gelman does, in fact, he's the only GM that I know of that's actually done a virtual draft before and not just a regular virtual draft. He did it in a hotel room, so not even a place where he had days to set up, you know, and not even a place he's familiar with. It's a small cramped hotel room. And in addition to that, he made a trade in 2014 for the Carolina Panthers. So he's done a lot in terms of the virtual draft thing. I said it in the video also, te video conferencing technology in 2014 is like terrible compared to what it is now. So there, he has that advantage that also now it's going to be easier for him. But I'm glad you brought the point of you don't make it as far as Gelman has without being, you know, a smart guy. Gelman and, you know, we both said it before, he's a good GM. But when it comes to drafting, I'll go out on a limb and say he's a great GM. He's one of the best general managers out there when it comes to being a draft scout and taking talent. Because I haven't seen in the two years that he's been with the Giants, uh, anybody else do it as good as he has for our needs. You could argue a little too many defensive tackles, but in the draft, he's been great. And I have faith that it's just going to continue this year. Like, he's so smart because he's playing everybody. I, I really think that he's playing the entire NFL. You know, with that pitcher going out there just to try and throw people off. I think he's playing Giants fans that doubt him. I think he's playing everybody. I, I do too. Uh, he's definitely playing the game. He knows how the game's played and he's going to take the guy that he feels the Giants, you know, is their biggest need. Or I shouldn't even say their biggest need. What he feel is is the best gonna player be on best, the board. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it would definitely be BPA. And, um, and know, once you again, that, on that, that points on that. back when you said BPA, that that's another reason why I think we're just going to go Simmons. Like, let's be real. Simmons, if he's there at four, right, he, in my opinion, is the best player available. That, so that and the fact that he's been linked to us more than anybody is why I think it's going to be Simmons. I would love an offensive tackle. I am an offensive tackle homer. I just, I don't know. I have a feeling we're going Simmons. Uh, for me, here's my thing on Simmons. I, I, this is where I, I, dis, I disagree. I believe Simmons is the best athlete at the top of the draft. I don't necessarily think he's the best football player. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he's excellent. Don't get me wrong. And he's a jack of all trades. Being a jack of all trades, being the master of none, does not necessarily behoove you in life. And I I don't get me wrong. I, I respect Isaiah Simmons. I'll be accepting of it. I might be a little angry if we take him because it's not the guy I wanted. But I'll be accepting of Simmons. But to me, it's, Simmons has to do so much in the NFL in his first year. I just don't see how he does it. To me, he has to be more impactful than Devin White to be worth the fourth overall pick. And Devin White was graded 50-something on PFF I, in his I first year's work. All right, so he has to be this. more impactful. Yeah. And I, I don't... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I just I, keep thinking you're done because the pause <laughs> is my bad. <laughs> it's all right. I, I'm just trying to make sure I get my point straight. That's all. And... um. Because I know a lot, a lot of people, if they get this far in this pod, are going to be like, I, I hate you, OGR. Um, but yeah, me, that's my feeling on Simmons. He's a jack of all trade, master of none. And I view him as a in a fit as a 4-3 outside linebacker and not a middle linebacker in a 3-4. And I, until I'm proven otherwise, um, I believe the Giants are going to be a base 3-4. Yes, they'll be a multi-front, don't get me wrong, but I believe they'll be a base 3-4, and I just don't see where he fits. I know he can do a lot of things in the field, just don't see where he fits. And, you know, Carl Banks made an excellent point. You know, okay, you move him to safety. Okay, teams are just not going to go that way if they're really that scared of Isaiah Simmons. Okay, you, you move him to outside weak side linebacker. Okay, the run's going to the opposite side. Like, he's just one guy. And you need the defense. You need the players around him to make him shine. Even though he did shine on his own at Clemson this year. 
Uh, we I believe Clemson has b- better talent collectively than the Giants currently have. I'm not saying Clemson's better than the Giants. I'm not. But collectively in college, they had better talent than the Giants do collectively right now. And I just don't think it's the right time to take Isaiah Simmons. That's why I'm not a big proponent of Isaiah Simmons. I, I do recognize the talent. I do see what he sees on the field. A lot of people look at me as and say I'm an Isaiah Simmons hater. I'm not. I just I don't think he's the right pick for the Giants right now. Even though, yes, we do need an impact player on defense. I don't disagree. And that, guys, is why I brought OGR on. <laughs> because even though I think the Giants are taking Isaiah Simmons, the reason I don't want him is that right there. Everything you just said and more. And you explained it perfectly, you know, in the best sense that I can could ever hope to the reason i don't want simmons is because the main point you said there he's just one guy it, one guy is not going to change his defense un- unless it's like a suit listen i don't want to throw chase young in there because they're of the same draft class but a pass rusher and a perennial pass rusher has more immediate impact on the defense than a middle linebacker does which is what simmons is being project- projected as and even that as you brought up is something that we don't know. We don't know what position he's gonna play. And going back to the being the one guy with Carl Banks saying, you move him around the field, fine. The offense is gonna be directed in the other, you know, in the opposite direction. We don't know what Simmons is gonna be. And I personally, I don't see how he fits in the Giants right now. The best way I see him fitting in is as a coverage linebacker, not even as a, a three down linebacker that's gonna be out there all the time. And in addition to that, he has to learn if he is gonna be used the same way he was used in Clemson, which is all over the place. As a rookie, he's gonna be having to learn like essentially three different playbooks you know the defensive back playbook the linebacker playbook the pass rush playbook that's not going to be easy and the final probably brought up about Clemson being uh better at the college level compared to the NFL level of the Giants Clemson was a and still is a championship level team so it brings into the question too Isaiah Simmons teammates did in fact make him look better than what he probably is once again say i'm not saying that he's bad but i agree with you he was definitely put up by his teammates so everything you brought up is why i don't want isaiah simmons and i like that i just think that we're gonna take him but i agree with you i don't want isaiah simmons for all of those reasons wow i'm actually shocked by that i thought you were actually gonna go in the opposite direction no i really i really do not want simmons i mean i wouldn't be mad if we take him but i am a strong offensive tackle guy because i don't see how simmons impacts this team year one and a lot of it has to do with as a rookie, you're going to have to learn a lot of stuff if he's going to be used the same way that he was in Clemson. Uh, and my thing is, I think to me, and people don't like when I make this point because they think it's unfair. So I, I use this example. Okay. You you get Jedrick Wills and he's good to solid. Let's just say, you know, I, I hate using PFF scaling, but it's it's the easiest way to point out to people. If I get a high 60 or 70 grade out of Jedrick Wills, I'm happy with that at right tackle. And I think you would be too. I but, would definitely, yeah. But if you get a high 60 or 70 grade from Isaiah Simmons, to me, that's not good enough. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, I no, mean that, that, that might be wrong and then people might think fair, but for me, Isaiah Simmons to be worth the number four overall pick, as good as people think he's going to be, he needs to be close to rookie of the year type caliber play on the field and if you think he can achieve that great draft him at four but he must achieve that and i and and people might think that's unfair but to me that's the kind of impact i need out of asa simmons i don't need the same impact out of jedrick wills and he in having even being less like you know grading out let's say worse than what isaiah simmons would be to me would be light years more impactful for the giants and what they need and what they need right now I agree with you. And the thing about Will, Wills or any offensive lineman really is that as an offensive lineman, when you come in, you have more of an impact than middle linebacker because the offensive line works as a unit. So if you're playing good, the guy next to you plays good and it just goes all the way down the line. And I think that immediately is a better impact than what Simmons would bring. Absolutely. I agree with that totally. So, I mean, yeah, man, I'm kind of kind of at, at, at a loss for words here right now because <laughs> I yeah man people are definitely going to be hating us because Giants fans as of right now are uh, heavily leaning towards the Simmons pick at least that's what they want you know you go on any type of poll online it's like 60 70 percent of fans want Simmons and and here's why and this is and this is the point a lot of people try to make to me and I think they fall flat on their face but but I commend them for trying 
they look at the defense and they say, if we had a good defense last year, we're a six and ten, seven and nine team. If we get a defense this year and the offense plays as good as it did last year, we can be a playoff team. What people are telling you, and there's obviously smart fans like Bad Dog that want Simmons, but and they know this is not going to be a playoff team. But there's Giants fans out there that are season ticket holders, and they're sick and tired of losing, and they've never seen this in their lifetime, even though there's been plenty of times, and you can look at it in Giants history, Giants have gone through long periods of droughts where they've never even been a playoff team, even never even sniffed the playoffs. You look at the 60s and the 70s, they were terrible. And the Giants look at, Giants fans look at that and say, we are a, you know, a good impact player away from... On defense, if the offense, you know, it's better because, oh, we didn't have this guy and we didn't have this guy and we didn't have this. At the end of the day, that's what Giants fans, I think, by taking Simmons, are hoping will happen. And I, if we take – and what I'm trying to tell them is we take Simmons or not, it doesn't matter. We're not a playoff team. I agree with you. I don't even need to go in too, de- too in-depth to support your opinion because you said there – at least one of the arguments is that if we had – a good defense last year, we win six wins. And if we have a good defense this year, we're a playoff team. That makes no sense because this year we have a harder schedule. So if we're going six and 10 last year with a good defense, we're probably going to go worse this year with a more difficult schedule. I mean, like, I don't even need to go in in depth to already refute that as to why I think that's just bad reasoning. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of reasoning Giants fans. I, I, I know of popular people, not, you know, not the circle we're in, but other Giants fan circles. I know for a fact that's their reasoning for taking Simmons. They'll not come out and fully say it, but that's their reasoning. I know one, I know one, I'm not going to mention any names. I know one Giants YouTuber on here um, that basically had that same reasoning a month and a half ago, why he wanted Simmons. He goes, I'm a season ticket holder. I'm tired of watching us lose. We need to be competitive. We need to be competitive now. And I want Isaiah Simmons because he's the most impactful player that we can get at four, and he will make the defense better day one. And if the offense can be the same, and he and that's that's why he's tired because he looks at them and he says, this can be a playoff roster. And to him, I say no. And every other Giants fan that feels that way. And, and I you know, get the, and you know I what? Get this would this would be a good topic to end it off on because we're coming up on the hour mark. Yes. But like for the last topic to address, just Giants fans, I will say this. I always like when fans have an effect on what the team does because sometimes they're right. But in this case, uh, I, I yeah, I, they're just they're, you're just wrong. We're not one impact player away. And if I don't know, man, fans. And I'm not, I never call anybody, you know, saying that, oh, you're a bad fan or anything because you're a fan, how you're a fan. But uh, that opinion is wrong. We're, we're definitely not one impact player away from doing anything. I concur. And there's two types of fans. Uh, again, I, I'm on the same thing. You're either a fan that thinks with your heart and you love the heartbreak or you're a fan that thinks with your head. And to me, uh, I'm a fan that thinks with my head. Don't get me wrong. On Sundays, I'm blinded by passion. But come Monday, I understand why we lost or won. So, and and I agree with you. And and tomorrow, no matter what happens, there's gonna be angry fans all over the place. It's uh, oh, absolutely. It's just the way it is. Tackle, be furious. <laughs> if we take an offense and tackle, there's gonna be angry fans. If we take Simmons, there's gonna be angry fans. If we trade down, there's there's no win, <laughs> complete win situation here. There, there's gonna be. Just angry fans, no matter what. And I um, think I think you lessen the blow if you trade down. And let's just hypothetically, I know we're coming up on the outer mark, but hypothetically, we trade down and we get somebody like we still get the tackle and Worfs, and then we get somebody like a Patrick Queen or a Kenneth Murray. I think teams, I think guys would be accepting of that at that point. The Jaguars are my circle. I think you still can get your Worfs. I think you can still get somebody like a Kenneth Murray or Patrick Queen, and Giants fans would be okay with that. Well, I, I will say like, this. My nice. dream trade down scenario is with the Jaguars get the best O lineman available and then get the best defensive player available at 20. That that would be the dream scenario. I just I don't see it happening, but that's my dream trade down scenario. I, I concur, man. That's my dream too. All right. And on that, we're up at around 50 minutes. That's right about the amount of time I have for today. Thank you for coming on OGR. We talked about a lot of good stuff. Uh guys, go down into the description. Sub him up. I'll have his uh, Twitter down there so you could follow him. Do you have an Instagram OGR? I do not have an Instagram, but I do have a Twitter. So all right. So well, bet. So you'll have the Twitter and YouTube channel down there. 
I, I I'll be honest, we we ended up agreeing on a lot more stuff than I thought we would, but that that was great, man. That was a great talk. Yeah, that was a great talk. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely no problem, man. I hope to have you on again, and whenever we do another Giants panel like we did last week, that was fun too. Uh, you guys stay tuned for that. If you haven't checked out the last one, I think it's on uh, Chris's channel. I'll probably yes, have a link to that also. But um, thank you, OGR. Any final thoughts? April 23rd can't come fast enough, my man. And uh, let's just hope we get it right tomorrow. And, and we, we improve collectively as a team, regardless of who they pick. I agree with you. Couldn't say it better. Thanks for watching, guys. We're out. Guys, Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.